We often hear the term accelerating in our everyday lives. What exactly is acceleration? Acceleration basically means speeding up. Anything whose speed is increasing is accelerating. On the other hand, anything whose speed is decreasing is decelerating. People often mistake constant speed with no acceleration at all, but this is actually a misconception. Can an object accelerate if it's moving with constant speed? Yes. Many people find this counterintuitive at first because they forget that changes in the direction of motion of an object, even if the object is maintaining a constant speed, still count as acceleration. As we all know, there are two types of quantity, vector and scalar. Vector is a quantity which of both magnitude and direction. Scalar is a quantity which only has magnitude. Acceleration is rate of change of velocity. Since velocity have magnitude and direction, acceleration is considered to be a vector quantity. In uniform circular motion, the direction of the velocity changes constantly, so there is always an associated acceleration, even though the speed might be constant. You experience this acceleration yourself when you turn a corner in your car. If you hold the wheel steady during a turn and move at constant speed, you are in uniform circular motion. What you notice is a sideways acceleration because you and the car are changing direction. The sharper the curve and the greater your speed, the more noticeable this acceleration will become. Acceleration equals to change in velocity per time. And don't forget, the unit of acceleration is meter per second square. For example, if a car and a sprinter are to have a race, the sprinter will have a greater acceleration than the car, but the sprinter's top speed is less. This means that the sprinter will lead for the first few seconds before the eventually getting passed by the car. Anyway, we know that the gradient of a velocity time graph represents acceleration. Therefore, a straight line whose gradient is constant represents a constant acceleration. Positive gradient indicates a positive acceleration. The steeper the line, the greater the acceleration. A horizontal line in velocity time graph has zero gradient. Thus, the acceleration is zero and the object moves with constant speed. However, if the slope of the graph is negative, the object has negative acceleration or we can say it's decelerating. On the other hand, if the velocity time graph shows a curve, its slope is changing over time. This means that it has a changing acceleration. In this particular example, we can calculate acceleration at time t by drawing a tangent to the curve. Of course, we can't discuss acceleration without displacement. Displacement is the distance moved by an object in a particular direction. In a velocity time graph, displacement is the area under the graph, as shown here. Now that we've understand the basics, let's get straight into the equations. There are four main equations of motion, as you can see here. Acceleration of free fall that is caused by gravity is approximately 9.81 meter per second square. When a ball is thrown at an angle t to the horizontal, it has both vertical component velocity and horizontal component velocity. 
Assuming that there are no air friction, the ball decelerates vertically due to gravity but move in constant speed horizontally. There are two components of vector. To find the component of any vector, you first need to find the angle between the vector and the direction of interest, and then multiplying the vector by the cosine of the angle zero. So now we will go through the example. If a ball is thrown with an initial velocity of 20 m per second at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal, the horizontal distance traveled by the ball can be calculated in three steps. The first step is to split the ball's initial velocity into horizontal and vertical components. We know that the initial velocity of the ball is 20 m per second. Then, we multiply that with cos 30 degrees to get the horizontal component which is 17.3 m per second. Now, multiply the initial velocity with sin 30 degrees and you will get the vertical component, 10 m per second. For the second step, we should consider the ball's vertical motion. How long will it take to return to the ground? In other words, we must find the time when its displacement is zero. Using distance equals initial velocity multiply by time plus 0.5 acceleration time square, we have zero equals 10 t minus 4.905 t square. This will give t equals 0 second or t equals 2.04 second. Now we know that the ball is in the air for 2.04 second. We multiply 17.3 with 2.04 to get horizontal distance traveled by the ball, which is 35.3 meter. Now, let's have a quick test, shall we? If a stone is thrown horizontally with a velocity of 12 meter per second from the top of a vertical cliff, how long does the stone take to reach the ground 40 meter below and how far the stone lands from the base of the cliff? You may pause the video now. If you are done, play the video for the answer. The first step you need to do is to consider its vertical velocity. The initial velocity is zero, and the distance is 40 meters. In this case, we use 9.81 meter per second square for the acceleration, as the stone is free falling. Then, we use the formula we've learned before, which is distance equals initial velocity multiply by time plus 0.5 acceleration times square. Put the numbers in, and you'll find that the time that the stone takes to reach the ground is 2.86 second. Now that we've found the time taken, we can calculate how far will the stone land from the base of the cliff by using the formula distance equals velocity multiply by time. Since the velocity is constant at 12 meters per second, and time is 2.86 second, we'll find that the stone will land 34.3 meters from the base of the cliff. So before we go, here are the things you need to remember from the lessons we've learned throughout the whole video. Acceleration is a vector quantity. This means that it have magnitude and direction. The equation of acceleration is its final velocity minus its initial velocity per time. It is measured in SI unit, which is meter per second square. There are two components of vector. When you want to find the component of any vector, always find the angle between the vector and the direction of interest first, and then multiplying the vector by the cosine for horizontal component and sinus for vertical component of the angle theta. When object have constant speed and same direction, the acceleration is always going to be zero. Oh, and always remember the four equations of motion. And of course, the acceleration of gravity, or freefall, is 9.81 meters per second. Don't forget the graphs too. As we've shown before, acceleration graphs is divided into five types, constant positive, constant negative, zero, positive changing, and negative changing. These are the lines with their respective meanings, in case you forgot. That's all for today's lesson. We hope that by now, you've understand accelerated motion. And as always, keep up the good work. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one. Peace.